Let me now stuff like this always happens like right when I'm close to go you know and then it's like uh, I guess we're not doing uh so I have to now uh, I'm checking where I don't see it on mine so I don't know where they're saying it let's see maybe I have to refresh they're not commenting on mine so. There is not a link on Intuitox. Well, there should be a damn link on Intuitox. There is a damn link on Intuitox. Uh, the hell? It's right here. Today is March 28th. I'm right on the page myself. There's the link. Prove it. 201-80328. I don't understand. Um, it's, I don't understand because it's on mine. Like, people should be going to my page, yes? Like, it should be. I don't understand. I do not understand. It's got... I do not understand. I do not understand. Let me see. Like it, <clears throat> it's totally, it's totally listed. It's totally live right now. It says on the two talks live right. I don't know. Maybe they need to clear their cash or something. Uh, cause it's defo, defo there. 
definite, definitely there. Well, uh, no. <laughs> I can't. Like I'm on, I'm on it, and it's like saying live right now, live right now. Um, open link in new tab. Okay, and I'm gonna. Uh, let me. I gotta find these. Where I'm gonna try and find out where you are. Upcoming shows it says today's broadcast. Curious times live right now. I don't get it. Um, it's very strange. I see on that one page that that's the case, but like uh, any one of them who is on their thing should be going able to see. I'm trying to find where that is back now. Like live right now. Live right now. Anyway, people just go tell them to go to Curious Times. Tell them to go to my Facebook page. The link will be there. Um, it's strange. Jintipa. Anyway, welcome. Sorry, I hate it when I get all off track like that right at the beginning of the damn show. Um, Hickville. Hickville Radio here. Uh, with your Hick host, Chris. And, uh, okay, Kathleen is here, and, uh, so for the people that can be here, <laughs> um, for the people that can be here, thank you for being here. For the people that can't, I don't know why, I don't know what I can do to help you. And you cannot hear me telling you that anyway, so. I don't get why people just don't go to my Curious Times page when they have any issue at all they should go to Curious Times. Like, even whether they go to Curious Times to my Facebook page or whether they go to the Curious Times page on intuitalks.com. Either way, they should go to Curious Times. If you want to get to Curious Times, go to Curious Times. The saying. Anyhow, okay. Enough of that. Um... <laughs> Uh, Kathleen's here. So then what? Tomorrow we must be off, because tomorrow is a Thursday. Friday, Salva's here. Um. Oh. I went and told Kimber she was here this Saturday, and that was wrong. So she's good. Hope she doesn't show up, because <laughs> we won't be here. <laughs> oh, Kimber's on the phone right now. Kimber, if I accidentally said that you're on Saturday, I was wrong. We got nothing scheduled for Saturday. It's because there's five Saturdays, that's why, right? And so for uh, April, you're here on the first uh, Saturday of the month. And uh, it gets screwed up whenever there's five of a particular day in the month, you know? Um, so this means, let me go back, so that means uh, tomorrow we're off, Friday we have Salva, and then Saturday I'm off, and Sunday Hillary's here, Monday Diana Monroe is here, Tuesday Lisa Nolan Shalosky is here, Wednesday Barbara DeLong is here, Thursday day off, and, <laughs> and then next, uh, so, so it's a solid week except for the Thursday. So anyway, that's what's happening. Uh, Kathleen Moore's here. She's a little under the weather and, uh, and, uh, in dire circumstances. What was the word? The word she said. I cannot be on the camera today. I cannot be on the camera today. No camera for me. It keeps jumping on me. No camera for me tonight. Horrid conditions. <laughs> this just in. Horrid conditions are being reported in the neighborhood of our guest and uh, horrid conditions and so no camera um anyhow Kathleen is here she's been a psychic uh, medium for much longer than you know what I mean some of you people have been alive probably well we got hey Shelby I sent you a Skype um request so add me okay don't be such a snob just kidding I think I got the right one although there was about six Shelby uh aesthetics uh, there, 
I don't know, that's maybe exaggerating. There was maybe four. Uh, but anyhow, that's like Mary Margaret. Like, there's 86,423 Mary Margaret uh, uh, Skype accounts out there. Because every time she forgets her password, she just creates a new one. <laughs> I'm all like, set your password and, and, and make your password be, I can't remember my password. <laughs> and then that'll be good. <laughs> your new password is, I cannot remember my password. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Uh, Shelby tried to find me, um, and we had to give up and just talk on the phone. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, um, See, now, because you don't know. Okay, let me give you a little Skype tutorial while we're here, okay? When you're there, um, yeah, you should be able to so go on your own name, uh, and then let's see. Uh, right, like if, when you have your name up top there, you know what I mean? And then if you click on it, it'll put your little picture up over to the right. And then it shows your actual Skype name right below the, your name name. If your Skype name is the same as your name name, then it will show that. But if you've give, given yourself a different screen name. So if somebody's asking you what your Skype name is, um, that's how you would find it. And if all else fails, like get in touch with me and I'll tell somebody what your damn Skype name is, okay? <laughs> for the day. <laughs> yeah, for that. For, you know, I hope they're really, I'm going to have to go and delete out all. Here, let me see how many do, and I've already deleted some, but, um. <laughs> okay, so I got like three. I got three, three right now of you uh and i have to re i'm gonna have to figure out which one is real april 3rd 2017 april 28th 2017 is that your birthday no it's 29th okay <laughs> you're t you're ahead time wise so if, when it's sending the birthday notice it'll be, it'll be on my date and then I have January 13th, 2018. This one must be your current one. That's and so it. there. <laughs> Here, I'm going to go like, uh, uh, okay, view profile. And then I'll send you your, I'm going to send you your own name, your own Skype name. Okay, now when I got this new computer. Oh my God! Tell me yeah, this didn't happen. I got, yeah, I got the Mac. That's that's why I got so many names. I think. No. No, when you get a new computer, you open Skype, uh -huh. and when it says on, you put your Skype name and your password. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. You do not have to make a new account because it's a new computer. <laughs> so it's. If this is your new, I don't know if it's your one or what. If you have another new one, then I don't know. I cannot keep up to you. But I just sent you your name to you. Okay. I'll and, um, and so everything after the full, like that whole thing is actually your name. So in other words, it's like, because you, so a lot of you guys, you're signing up with the, uh, you into, you did the integrated, uh, um, window like what was it used to be what did the hotmail um what did the uh msn messenger msn messenger and so when they they integrated msn messenger with skype yes and so when you guys are using your msn messenger to sign up or log in or whatever it's giving you that live full colon and then a name um, as your, as your sort of name. So that's sometimes what the problem is. And so anyway, um, I don't know if that's your most current one. That was your current one as of January 13th, 2018. <laughs> I don't know if you've changed it again. If you did, I, I didn't lose my mind. You know that, right? You do know that. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> 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 and next time you set one up, don't take no shortcuts by using your messenger or any of that. Like when you set up a new account, mm -hmm. like just put put 
make a name, a normal name. That this is going to have live, blah, 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 big, long, crazy-ass name with dots and everything else in it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Just, like, put your name. Put your name. Make a okay. password. Password will be, I can never remember my password. <laughs> and, uh, now, so whatever. I'm, I've, I'm in Skype.com, and it says Mary yeah. Simmons at the top on the right. Yeah. And... Online with me, so that does mean you have another new one. I think you just want to make me go out of my ever loving mind, is really what that is. And because you're showing us offline, all of your accounts that I have you listed under are showing us offline. And, um, oh, my pleasure, uh, Shelby. And so, anyhow, um, anyway, so there you go. Like, uh, that's your little. Please, you guys, don't set a new account up every time you forget your... When you have a thing where you forgot your password, you Mm go... There's always a link. It says, I forgot my password, and you click it. (laughs) And then it sends your password to your email address. You go open your email. Voila, you reset your password. And you didn't... And you just avoided cluttering up the system with yet another account. Oh, my God. Anyway... Okay, let me... Uh, no, you're not... Uh, obviously, I don't have you. I don't have your new one, whatever one it is. I have... The last one that I have was when I sent you... I, I sent you that EVP session that I did for Linda Grillo. Uh-huh, okay. That's this in is... January 13th, 2018. So it means you've set up another account since then. Well, I see you, and it says Chris is offline. No, that's not Chris. Then. That's not me, then. Oh. Okay. So go to that person. Here's a good tip, okay? Now go to that. In the list, left-hand column where it's showing your contacts, yes? Uh-huh. Click on that person, the imposter, Chris. Click okay. on that name, mm-hmm. and then right-click. Right-click on it, and there's a little menu of things. And then Chitch, click on View Profile. Do not say it out loud, just in case it is me. But um, uh, does it if it has the word Rebel in it mm-hmm. as a Skype name? Does it? No, I can't. Right. See, uh, my uh, my Mac doesn't have a right click thing. My mouse is on here. It's goofy. I have to learn some more. God. Your Mac does not have a right click. Mm-mm. It's just got the mouse down at the bottom. You no, The mouse pad? Yeah. Like it's on the keyboard. Is it a laptop? Uh-huh. Okay, in the mouse pad, that, like the, the trackpad doesn't have two little sections? It's nope. There's a little... Nope, it's one I section. I Oh my God! Maybe Great. You now, you, now you're gonna make me look this up because now this is insane. So how do you right click <laughs> on a Mac laptop? Unbelievable. That's Without okay. further ado, let's. Do, well, no, because now I'm here and now I'm gonna do it. Okay. Five, there's five ways to right click on a Mac trackpad. <laughs> there's five ways. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I think you know, okay, that's, a, that's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my life. So, click with your thumb while making contact with two fingers. What? <laughs> oh my god. So, oh. this is. So. Um. Stop. Stop. Okay. Uh, so, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I'll try. Just uh, click with the thumb. Well, so you put two fingers on and then you click with your thumb, I guess. Okay? The second mm-hmm. one, click with two fingers. Click with two, two, click with two fingers. Okay? I was trying. Okay. Oh. The third one is 
What? We're going to okay. find a way. <laughs> We're going to find a way. <laughs> did you get it? Did I it think work? I, I think I did because it says reload page, open in dashboard, save page as. Okay. Okay. Now go back over to Skype and click on that imposter name, Chris. Okay. So do that. Do, do Hit it with two fingers or whatever it was that you had to do. Okay. Oh, okay. So did it pop up? Yep, yep, and that, and, and it's you. Uh, well, how can that be? Cause, uh, well, you don't have me then. I don't get it. Type something to me. Okay. Type, um, type something to me. I always show offline. Why didn't I just say that? I always show as offline. But, um... Type something to me. Just say hello. And then I'll find out who you are. Did you do it? I'm trying. It won't let me. There's no... Um... Oh, there you go. Welcome to the Skype. Sorry, Kathleen. I, I was like going to be a dog. Okay. There you are. <laughs> okay, I sent. Okay, so I sent that one to you there also. Okay, is there? Okay, so hello. Oh my God. Okay, there. <laughs> so really, um, uh, when you have so now, here, here, um, okay, here's. <laughs> Here's your here's your Skype name. Here's your Skype name. That's your Skype name. Oh, okay. Thank you. And it used and it used to be <laughs> uh, every other version of that. Every other version of that. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's the current one. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Get off my damn radio show and uh, let me get going. I'm kidding. Goodbye. Thank you. All Thank right, you. talk to you in a bit. All right. <laughs> ah, okay. That's ridiculous. Well, who would make a computer that doesn't have a right click? Oh, my God. Yeah, just two fingers. Always see the magic is always in two fingers. And that reminds me of a story. Now, how did Adriana get unmuted? Okay, we're going to mute Adriana. Okay. I need to have that uh, the whole scratch sound effect and start over. You know what I mean? Welcome to Curious Times. It's Wednesday, March 28th, and our guest tonight is Kathleen Moore, who's been a gifted psychic medium for over two decades and has uh, clientele across the world, around the world. And uh, she does uh, gallery readings, psychic readings, mediumship readings. She does house clearings and motivational speaking and she does uh she makes and creates she does, tumbles stones and she tumbles uh, down the hill every now and then and she anyway now I'm getting silly um she does coaching that's what it was life coaching and business coaching and all kinds of things like that. She's all things to all people and has been for many years. Uh, hailing from British Columbia, Canada, and coming to us live from somewhere in the United States, uh, it's Kathleen Moore. So you can find out more about her uh, by go by go by go to her uh, website, and uh, that could be at www.kathleenmorepsychicmedium.com and uh, Facebook Kathleen Moore Psychic. Is that it? Just psychic? Kathleen Moore Psychic? Yeah, Kathleen Moore Psychic on Facebook. Uh, now I have the hiccups. How does that happen? And, um, uh, and you can get her by the old fashioned way, which is telephone, uh, 330-554-8202. And let's just go get her before I get uh, sidetracked by anything else. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Couldn't be better, thank you. 
<laughs> horrid conditions here in Ohio tonight. <laughs> horrid. <laughs> I, Nobody. I got a chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> horrid. Horrid. Like the word horrid is what, but then put together with the word conditions. <laughs> 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 you know, it makes me think about weather or something like that. You know what I mean? Or uh, yeah. like just get your house out or but horrid conditions as it relates to uh, your inability to be on the webcam. <laughs> so, yeah, it's more like when you, you get a really bad drunk and you fall asleep and your hair's all sticking up on one side and there's stuff in it and you don't know where it came from. It's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like the way I'm feeling right now. So, um, I'm sorry for that. That's okay. It's just been a rough month altogether. <clears throat> you know, like, I'm sorry I had to cancel two weeks ago. My dog passed away. That was suddenly, there was, it was unexpectedly. So, um, and, you know, then we inherited this bird this sun conure that screams pretty bird all the time and but that's good because my great my great dame i don't think would be i think she would have really started to falter without the other dog if it wasn't for the bird she's like really attached to the bird so really that's yeah that's, that's birds get on my nerves when they're too chirpy and too yeah to be naked. I, can, I, I cannot i I couldn't. Have, I would probably have a nervous breakdown if I had to live in the same house as a bird. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good. It's a pretty good bird. He gets loud sometimes, but I've already got him him retrained a little bit. Where he gets a treat if he's quiet. So when he starts getting loud, yeah. but he messes with yeah. the dog. He trained the Great Dane. Like we got him four days. We inherited. He was my friend's bird who passed away. Um, mm -hmm. And nobody would had experience, but because of my experience with birds of prey and stuff, they thought, you know, would you like this bird? And I was like, no. My husband was like, yes. But my husband liked the bird, so we brought the bird. And uh, four days later, the dog passed away. So my great Dane is fascinated because, you know, she's a little touched. Um, is very fascinating, but the bird figured out how to train the Great Dane right away. He does a certain whistle and rings a certain bell, and the dog goes running over there. So now he f he messes with the Great Dane. Oh so now God. I'm dealing with that all the time now, you know. So my husband, and then my husband's oh like, he, the, the, the bird's so loud. And I'm like, we need a bigger cage. So we got, he's got this like condo now, and now he's quiet. Teach the bird to say, what's the dog's name? Luna. So yeah. Teach the bird to say, sit, Luna. <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to get him to say her name, but he does, he rings the bell and then he whistles. It sounds like he's trying to say pretty bird, but uh -huh, uh -huh. he rings a, he rings a certain bell only for the dog. So if he rings the other bells, the dog doesn't get out. So we changed his name from Sonny, he's a Sun Conyer, to Quasimodo because he run he he climbs all over his cage, but he's got like yeah. five bells in there that he rings, just like the the <laughs> bell ringer. So now we named him Quasimodo. Didn't ring my bell. <laughs> so he climbs all over. He climbs all over like the Hunchback of Notre Dame and rings bells. <laughs> So, oh my god! So it's been, uh, it's been a you, couple of weeks. Yeah, that's uh, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be. Able. See, I knew, like, I always had this idea in my mind of my, you know, I used to joke all the time that, you know, because of my potty mouth, um, that you know, my and I took after my dad that way, mm -hmm. and that he must have. You know, I could see him with me being in the crib, and most most moms and dads are going like, "Say da da, say da da," and I could see my dad saying, "You know, say f you, say f you," you know, or whatever. <laughs> and, um, so anyhow, then there I was in Saskatchewan uh, when I was young, and I had taken I had moved over there to uh, Saskatoon 
And so I'm, this was for a very short period of time where I was still in touch with my family. And um, so we would write letters. And uh, so I get this letter from my mother, and she's telling me how they got this parakeet or whatever it was. And um, that my dad was trying to teach it to say, fuck off. Pardon my language, but for the journalistic quote, uh, I had to like, give the exact quote. Uh, and uh, so he trying to teach the bird to say "f off," and I and I knew like right then in my mind like that that's probably what he was doing <laughs> with me in the crib. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> when he was around, he was he was uh, obviously trying to train me how to, and I and I excelled at that. I was very young when I was already like saying that word with great power and and confidence and uh but not around my parents or I would be dead, you know what I mean? But to right. everybody else in the world, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh so there there it was. It was so funny when, when he turns around and tries to teach the bird to say that, you know? I go, Uh huh. So now now nobody can blame me. How could anybody blame me for that? You know, like when like English is not my first language. My first language is like sailor talk, you know what I'm saying? Or bar talk. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure my father taught it to me. If not, like, that you just pick it up, you know what I mean? And I, I probably, I wouldn't be surprised if I, if that was one of the first words out of my mouth as a little baby. I well, it was one of mine, I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, well, I, it'll be interesting to, like, birds, oh my God, they make a mess too, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, but I worked in wildlife long enough, and I worked with a lot of um, birds over the years that, you know, there's a way you can keep down with that, you know, and stuff like that. He's not too bad, and then the condo, we've got him, and he's doing okay. So I call it the condo because it's really big for that <laughs> size. But I have all this stuff from when I worked wildlife, eh? So I, you know, I have tons of cages and stuff. Get that bird to do psychic readings, you know? Yeah, get him, cause... get him to yes, just for yes and no, it's for no, and then like ask, start asking him psychic questions. Because I need to add one more thing. Yeah, let's do it for the gimmick. Right, that, for the gimmick, because you know, it's like tonight, reading by Kathleen's bird. My... And, uh... <laughs> I had a client the other day. He, she's like, I'm gonna buy you a hoverboard and a velvet robe and I'm and a smoke machine. And when you come over to my house to do readings, that's the way you have to come in. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Um, I remember one night, like we used to do crazy things with Amy and others, and we would have nights where, oh, we would do the magic eight ball, or uh, mm -hmm. when I, and then if Amy, like, I, she, she one night I, I came with a like cha um, channel surfing readings or whatever like that, and so she would do channel surfing readings and. Um, like, so that the person would, she would tell us wherever she was, you know, because sometimes if she was on the road, what, what channel range do you have in your hotel room on your TV, right? And then the people would have, would just have to give her a number between those two numbers. And then what she would like use the, re was remote, con remote readings or something like that. You know, it was a little spoof off of, instead of remote viewing or something, it was like remote reading. And, uh, so she would turn click clicker to the channel. And then give a reading based, sort of like with with a book, right? When you open right. it to a certain, and you get so it'd be like whatever was on TV would be. And then like there was like the the highway sign or the street sign readings and all that crazy kind of stuff. And one night Barbara DeLong had her cat, like her her cat was like kick, put and paws on cards and stuff like that. And so we had like readings by. Uh, cards that were chosen by Barbara's cat, you know, and like we've done some pretty, pretty wacky stuff over the years. We get a little bored from time to time here. Right. After we've done thousands of shows or whatever, right? And, uh, and so yeah, now we haven't ever done bird reading, so, so. Well, maybe I'll, I'll start thing. working on that. So yesterday when I was walking back, was it yesterday? Uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before, I had to return this battery that I had gotten for for my e-cigarette thing. And so anyway, um, when I was coming back, I'm walking, and it was cold and windy, blah, 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 and I went a different way. Blah, 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 blah. And so then I see this car on the side of the road, and then but there's something on the 
windshield, hey? And so, like, I just do, I get a little closer to the car to see if I could see what's there. And, like, and I could audibly hear, like, a plop. And then I saw a little splatter. It didn't quite look like bird poop, but, you know, I couldn't imagine what. So I look up. There's nothing there anywhere. Wow. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what? And it was almost like a little brown. You know how, like, bird poop is, like, like with, like, from seagulls and stuff is a little more white or from pigeons or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah. Like, it was like this Indian red color. Little teeny splash. salmon like salmon berries maybe. And I like looked out, like there's nothing like I, I thought even like is there a tree hanging overhead? Did something nothing. 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 Like, what is going on? That was trippy. That was a little bit trippy. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It's trippy when a bird. Oh. It's trippy when a bird shits. <laughs> I am not doing. I am not. I'm sorry. I'm drawing the line. I'm not doing bird shit readings. If that's what you're leading into, that is not what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know what? God, it's like you know that's my brain doesn't work very well since the accident. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't even know how I got there. Yeah. Uh, but but it was really just to say, like, that I had, like, ghost poop, you know, splat right down in front of my face. When there was, like, nothing, nobody, nobody, nobody. Nothing overhanging, nothing. It didn't make any sense at all to me. Where did that come from? Because, you know, me, I always try to solve the pro Like, what? Like, there's... A there's got to be an answer to this, right? And <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe it was just to delay you for a minute. Yeah. 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 Or I got, like, now all my dead people are starting to, like, poop on, try to poop. Uh, I, sh I should have went, ha, ha, you missed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, you missed. Like Buddy, Buddy White with the Grim Reaper. You missed me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. You better go back to target school, target practice school. And um, Chinese that is going to fall. Maybe the Chinese junk. What are you talking about, Mary Margaret? I love Mary Margaret. What are, what is like Chinese junk? The space station. There's space station. Oh, that's oh. right. It's going to fall this I always and if Where is it going to fall? They're not sure, but they said if you see it, you're not supposed to smell it or touch it because it could be um, poison. It's supposed to fall on Easter Sunday, right? Yeah, the only place it's safe is um, Antarctica, I think. Well, guess who's going to Antarctica this weekend? That's yeah. right, it's me. I'm like, okay. you know what, like, I remember there was another time a satellite was going to be coming down and blah, blah, blah. And at that time, we had, like, one of these drama queens that was always running. She would be the one that would come into the chat room and use size 86 font and bold and bright pink. <laughs> like, and fill, and fill the freaking chat room, like, one sentence, the whole chat page is taken up, you know what I mean? And... It was always like this, you know, uh, always some drama, always like some, uh, and so she's one night, she comes in, so 7.2 billion people are going to die, and I'm all like, oh my God, really, like, there's everybody's going to be fine, but I go like, quite honestly, I would pray for it to land, like, right on my head. Like, if the thing is going to land, like, come and land on my head. I'll go stand in my backyard to make it easier for you, because... What better way to go? It would be like just poof, vaporized. You know what I mean? If you got hit by a satellite that was falling from space, you would be like, <sighs> there would be nothing. There would be no, especially if you didn't see it coming, you would just be like, <sighs> vaporized. Know what I mean? That would be yeah. the best way to go, I think. Even better than in your sleep. Because there wouldn't even have to be a cremation or anything, because you would just be poof, gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you would just be, like, gone. Poof. I couldn't imagine there would be anything left. 
if if a satellite fell on you that fell from space. Do you think? I think you'd just be. I don't think there'd be well, much I, left. I don't know. Let it land in my backyard. You would be part of the space station. That's right. I would be part of the space station. Now, that sounds like a little bit of fear-mongering to me. In other words, like oftentimes when anything is going to fall from space or whatever, they always want to tell you, oh, don't, like the government will swoop in because they want their stuff back and all. And then there's people like, where it's illegal if you get caught with, like, it sounds like a bit of fear-mongering for them to say, like, oh, don't touch it or smell it. Like, what do you mean, don't smell it? If it's, like, like, I'm sorry, I don't go and snort, like, something that, like, anyways, ugh, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense, though. Sounds a bit of fear-mongering, no? Fear-mongering so you don't get in there and get a piece that you can sell on eBay. Yeah. 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 That's what I think. And, uh... And if you got a piece with me on, like uh, that became that uh, got like blunt, like it would be, the value would shoot up, right? <laughs> there, <laughs> it'd be like way high. It'd be like oh, ghost, be like, ghost dog. It would be like ghost bird poop. It'd be worth a lot of money. They'd be like Chris from Curious Times. You mean Chris from Curious Times, the one in Canada? <laughs> oh my god. Bidding would the bidding war would be on, you know. Bidding war would be on. Double in the price, double in the price. So anyway, uh, so you say it's gonna land. Like it seems to me, they would have a better uh, idea of where it's gonna fall, other than anywhere but Antarctic. The day before, they said they'd have a better idea, but it could oh, okay. fall. The United States is like right in the middle of where. Um, it, you know, the, the place where they think it will. You think they can clean up Mar-a-Laga? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> saying. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be an interesting ass- way to assassinate a president. <laughs> like by space junk. You know, oh, assassination God. by space junk. <laughs> well, he fired so somebody else too. He'll he just fire him. Oh, oh. Jesus. Oh. Okay. Unbelievable. I'm going to mute. Yeah, like right. That'd be a hole in one. There's a hole in one, Donnie. There's a hole in one. He's <laughs> 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 not space. Thing lands on his golf course, that's going to be one big hole, man. And uh, so, anyhow, um, well, that's interesting. So, when did you say that's supposed to come down? Chinese satellite? They said Saturday or Sunday. I thought they said Easter Sunday. We all know no, how I, I am with the news, though. I don't watch it, so I get my news from Facebook. So, you got to take it with a grain of salt. April Fool's. Oh, April Fools. A spacecraft the size of a small house is about, oh, it's the size of a small house. Well, that would, that would definitely kill you <laughs> if it landed on your head. Uh, it's going to enter Earth. Okay, now it may break up into many pieces when it enters the atmosphere. We don't know when exactly, and we certainly don't know where. Pieces of the spacecraft might survive the fiery reentry and make it to the ground, or maybe they won't. We'll be able to see it happen if it reenters over a populated area, probably. As you can tell, there are a lot of unknowns for something that's going to happen in a matter of days. Forecasters have a pretty good idea of what the weather is going to be like on April 1st. The operators of this totally man-made and human-controlled spacecraft. I don't know, you guys. Are they already, like, we're, this would be pretty elaborate. Uh, pretty elaborate, day, like, uh, premeditated April Fool's joke. Um, let's see what, uh, what's NASA? Let's go to NASA and see if NASA has it. www.nasa.com, yeah? And, uh, 
nasa.com. Is that, I don't think that's right. Oh, nasa.gov.com or something, is it, guys? nasa.gov.com. Let's try that. nasa.nasa. Okay. March 29th, coverage of the U.S. spacewalk begins, blah, blah, blah. Search. Okay, Chinese satellite. Yes? C-H-I-N-E-S-E satellite. Um... NASA spacecraft images offer sharp uh, satellites map fine aerosol pollution over China. Uh, doesn't look like NASA saying anything. Now I'm going to just quickly go NASA uh, Chinese uh, satellite. It's not even a satellite, right? It's a anyway. Falling, London Bridge is falling down. Maybe falling. it's Japanese. I don't know. It's either one of them. No, it's Japanese. like Chinese. Is it? Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's just a... Okay, so Chinese satellite could face same fate as NASA Skylab. That's the Daily Star. Okay, uh, Tiang Gong... Space Station to fall this weekend. Now, it's on National Geographic. I don't think National Geographic would participate in a hoax. So, the Tiangong Space Station geez, close, is expected to break apart in Earth's atmosphere sometime between March 30th and April 2nd. Okay. Uh, I feel this incredible connection with the universe. I'm part of a star. Where is that coming from? I don't know. <laughs> that is it, you? It's, uh, it's off of the National Geographic page, I'm on. I just had to... Okay, our ability to predict how falling satellites will behave is still very much in its infancy, in part because we lack the ability to do a real-time global monitoring of atmospheric dynamics. Um, we don't understand all of the dynamics and mechanics of the atmosphere with sufficient accuracy and precision to predict well into the future. This translates into such a huge uncertainty in the orbital track or trajectory of the threatening object that it could mean the difference between entering over the Pacific Ocean or the United or over the United States. So when it does re-enter, the space station is expected to break apart, and there is the possibility that fragments as hefty as 220 pounds will come crashing to Earth. That's, like, formidable. Um, something uh, similar happened in 1979 when NASA's Skylab station deorbited and did not burn up as quickly as expected. Parts of the station rained down over Australia, and while no one was hurt, one shire did fine NASA for littering. <laughs> NASA got fined for littering. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. In the report to the the Chinese officials downplay the risk of fragments surviving the trip. Um, most of the planet is covered by ocean and so in all likelihood if there are any survivable pieces, the highest probability is that they will land somewhere in the ocean. Even if some do impact land, most of the world's population is centered around specifically coastal areas, which will further reduce the probability that any given survivable piece will hit a densely populated area. So in other words, they don't know somebody could get hurt, but they won't say it out loud. <clears throat> That's what that says. You know, like those two things, like, see, like, this is how my brain works. So on the one hand, Buddy says... Um, most of the Earth is covered by water, so it's going to land in the water, probably. Okay? Then mm -hmm. it talks about, okay, um, most of the world's population is centered around specifically coastal areas. Okay, coastal areas are like areas on the water, yes? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, uh, I don't know, like, uh, to me, it's like there would be a higher probability than if it's like higher probability that it's going to hit in the water, then if it's going to hit in the land instead of in the water, it's chances are it'll hit somewhere around, the, you know, if their argument had holds any water, which it doesn't. So anyhow, I just picked that part. But anyway, 
Um, that'll be interesting to see. I wish that I'd love to get it. Now, I, now I'm trying, still trying to track. Okay, so uh, Chinese, Chinese satellite. You said contain poison. I don't know if it's poison. <laughs> they just said that it, it not to breathe it or touch it. Yeah, all the it. toxic, all the toxic chemicals. Um, with fill, satellite with toxic chemicals. Uh, now they're talking about Tasmania, poisonous chem chemicals. The mass of eight ton space lab lab vanished from China's eyes in March. Well, let's check this out. It vanished from China's eyes. <laughs> um, Ooh, what if massive it's a What if it's got poop massive in it? Eight <laughs> <laughs> Mary. Oops, they, they, well, ew. March 2016, and the experts failed to relocate it. However, authorities now tracked it down and predict that it will come hurtling back towards Earth before the end of this month. The majority of the satellite is set to burn up in the atmosphere, but experts believe that junk weighing as much as 100 kilograms could make it to the surface. And that is not the only potential damage. Um, contains a rocket fuel known as hydrazine, which if humans are exposed to it for long enough can cause liver and nerve damage. So basically everything that's on our planet. Yeah. <laughs> Aerospace and technical and scientific research development that uh, assist NASA rates. Now, if the thing's crashing down, why can't they, like, drain that sucker? You know what I mean? You know how, like, airplanes, if they're going to crash, they'll, like, unload all their fuel first? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They've lost all control to it. That's why they uh, don't know where it's going to land. Hmm. Well, they have, so now here's the thing that they have to build in as a safety measure to these things then. An automatic, why don't they build in an automatic explode, like a self-destruct? Mission impossible. They could have a self-destruct in the, the, long before it even hits Earth's atmosphere. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would make that would make sense. Drain the sucker. <laughs> Drain the sucker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that's good. That's interesting, and that gave us something to talk about. Now, Katie, are you there for reading? Diane, are you there for reading? Uh, Adriana, are you there for reading? Um, and who's the other anonymous person? Who's the other anonymous person? You're unmuted, so you phoned in and you pushed a one button. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Anonymous. Here, you're going to hear a beep in your ear. That's me muting you. Now you'll hear a beep in your ear again. Who's that? They don't want to talk to me. Well, I don't want to talk to you either. na 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 poop know what I mean? And so anyway, okay. So, okay, Diane says yes. <clears throat> okay, Diane says yes. Um, well, and we're going to assume Adriana, okay? Uh, I don't know who the, uh, I do not know who the anonymous person is. Um, so we'll get to them. We'll try, we'll try, we'll try them again. So let's do a song. Sing a song, make it simple. Yes. What would you like to hear, Kathleen? Uh, I don't know. You pick it. All right. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that question. Uh-huh. You must be ready for anything that curious time. I know. What the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we've done that one recently. <clears throat> Let's do, I do not want to do that. For that, okay, we're gonna get down here into. Oh, and it's this one. Uh, I don't want that one. Okay, I'm gonna lose my. Mo okay, here. Um, we'll do here. 
See, now it's going to ru- I'm going to try my new thing, which is to stop recording while I play a song, and I'm not going to play that one anyway. It's too much. Um, okay, there we go. Neil Young. Neil Young. <coughs> there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Go with that. Unknown legend. Okay. I'm going to hit the stop button on recording. Alrighty, we're back now after playing music, which uh, will hopefully prevent our show from being muted on YouTube. And um, that'll be a little solution I'll have to get used to uh, used to incorporating into the show. Anyway, we're going to get to a couple of readings here. Kathleen is still on with me. Um, Adrienne is unmuted again. We're going to go on mute, Adriana. Hello, anonymous person. Who is that? Unmute your your phone or whatever it is you're on. Okay, I don't know. Like in Canada, we have this thing where when somebody says hello, <laughs> we answer them. <laughs> like I don't know how it works or wherever you are. but Okay, the person is either falling asleep or they don't know what they're doing. Um... So that's good. <laughs> so we got Kat, we got Diane, and then we have Katie, uh, uh, who I don't think I've ever spoken to. And then we have um, Adriana. And then we have this mysterious anonymous person who will not identify themselves. And so, uh I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get there. Are you ready to rumble there, Kathleen? Yeah, I don't. Um, we can do card readings tonight. If you want medium yeah. readings, have a specific question because I don't feel good. I don't want to go through all the, you know. Mm-hmm. So we can do card readings or a specific well, let's look at question. Kate and find out who this person is. Hello, Katie. I think I've never talked to you before. Hello. Hello. Are you new? Yes. Okay. How did you find us out about us? Um, I met Kathleen. Oh, from Kathleen. Okay. Well, you got muted somehow. Okay, we'll go and unmute you. Okay. Okay. So you you know about you know Kathleen then. Yes, Chris, I know Kathleen. Hello, yes, I do. Katie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And I guess Mercury must be retrograde or something like that. Okay, there you go. So you found us through Kathleen. Very good. Thank you, Kathleen, for bringing people, new people to the show. And so mm-hmm. uh, Kathleen's going to pull a card for you, if that's okay. Yeah? Oh, she got muted again. What is going on? How is it you keep I- getting muted? I uh, my connection keeps trying and reconnecting. Oh, isn't that st- you're on wireless connection, wireless internet? Yeah. Yeah, that that'd be the problem. Well, we'll do the best we can. At least she she knows who she's talking to. If the rest of it, uh, uh, we may, we may have to handle through the chat room, but we'll hang in there as long as we can. So she's gonna pull a card card for you if that's okay. Just go ahead because she got muted again. Okay. All right, Katie, I'm going to pull a card from the Rider Weight deck. I use like two decks, but I want to do the Rider Weight deck for you. So the card I pulled for you is the Star card. And um, this really shows me that you're right now connecting to Mother Nature, um, that you're unveiling yourself, that you're really coming into this time of life where your energy is becoming very, very strong. I do feel that is a female energy. And we've all heard me talk about that this year is the year of the, the female embodiment. Um, I see that a lot of water around you with this card. So that tells me that we have new beginnings and new starts. 
Um, it also shows me that you have cosmic connection that's coming up, which show, talks of great success that's coming. If you choose to climb the mountain, you'll be able to get to the top. I also see that you're at a Y in the road. The star card always star card always signifies that you're at a Y in the road and that you're trying to choose which direction to take. And I do see that that's more on a personal level rather than a professional level. Um, the tree of life always shows, uh, that, that shows up in the star card always shows that knowledge is something that you crave and you're looking towards. Um, this the card always brings hope, joy, and wonder, uh, and it always opens up our imagination and connects us to our cosmic universe or to source or to a higher power. Don't hesitate this this year to to go for what you want and what you're after, and don't take no for for an answer. Get what you want. Let your heart and mind and your soul fly and enjoy what what the year and and happiness is ahead of you. That's what it shows me. Um, that's everything that I got for you with that. It also shows me that there's going to be some renovations of some sort. I don't know where that is going to be, though. I don't know if that is going to be in personal life or at, you know, at work. So, and I do see that as physical renovations. So, um, that's usually construction or something like that. So the card's actually a really good card. It shows me between. Um, connecting with your spirit self and your physical self, but it also shows me this is the year that you get what you want. Um, looks like a birthday coming up too. I see birthday celebrations, so I don't know what the birthday is. Mother Nature like gives you a gift on your birthday. I'm going to unmute her in a second, but I'm trying to get your picture back up there now that I have the tutorial. Okay, I'm just going to get that real quick, get Catherine's info back up there and let's go. Uh, you said there's a birthday coming up soon, Catherine? Is that what you just said? Well, there's a there's a, a birthday or a celebration of a birthday and, and Mother Nature bestows a gift on them. Um, usually the star card usually signifies that Mother Nature is gifting somebody something so um but I actually saw like psychically a birthday celebration going on. So I don't know if that's her birthday or somebody else's, but there's a, a celebration of birth that ha takes place. I also see her on a journey, like um, the star card also, when I was connecting with her energy, I saw, I know this sounds really weird, but like, uh, as everybody knows, I read by, you know, connection to spirit. And then I see the, the photograph. And I saw her like moving forward, but it's like she had the stick with the hobo bag. Does everybody is familiar with that? So that doesn't mean culture. homeless. Yeah, that's what when I when I picked up on the renovations and everything like that. It's going in a whole new direction and and being comfortable with yourself and and making decisions based on that. But um, you know, it's it it signifies journey when I see that. So. Okay, is that good? You'll have to type for us uh, because you keep getting muted, Katie. So if you can hear us, um, you have anything you need. I mean, I'll unmute you again, but it's just going to mute you again. So is that you have any? Okay, I just muted her already. As fast as I unmute her, it mutes her. Um, can you hear us? Can you type to us in the chat room, Katie? Um, can you hear us? Okay. Awesome. So is there anything else? Is that good? Do you need anything uh, expanded upon, or is that good? Or <laughs> I'll take that as a, ah, wonderful. I feel everything resonates. Thank you, Kathleen. Very good. Thank you, Katie. Sorry about the next time. Maybe you could use a telephone uh, or whatever if you have a long distance plan. That might be a better, a more effective way. Okay, good. That's um. Thank you for finding us uh, at various times. Appreciate new listeners always. Uh, so now we're gonna go with Diane. Hello, Diane. Hello, Chris. Chris, you crack me up. I love listening to you. You make me giggle. <laughs> That's why God put me on this 
damn planet, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's good to know. Good to know. At least I have a purpose. Right, that's right. <laughs> and, I, and I found it very inform- informative of uh, that information about that Chinese would satellite. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know anything. The poisonous Chinese satellite. If you want to be informed with not fake news, come to Curious Times. (laughs) That's right. That's right. We'll talk about poop. Oh, my God. (laughs) We'll talk about anything. That's okay. So, so, uh, um, card being okay for you? Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. Um, you, you know, whatever, Kathleen, Kathleen, whatever, you, you know, the cards show you, that'd be cool. Okay. So, uh, I wanted to pick, I was thinking of going with the Rider deck, and then I just kept going back to my Wood Tarot with you. So, I want to pull a card from there, and I'll describe the picture, because a lot of people aren't familiar Um with the wood tarot and I really do look afraid tonight. Horrible, horrid conditions here. So the card that I chose that I, that I picked for you um, to the deck is called the four of vessels, which vessels is something that helps us travel or get from point A to point B. But the four of vessel always signifies boredom. It signifies um, being in a, in a place where you feel like you're stagnant. You feel like you know that there's things coming, but it's like the same thing day in and day out. Um, the four vessel always shows me that you're going to start changing that, that you're going to be shaking things up. It's not that boredom is bad. It's just that you tend to get a little bit dangerous when you get bored and you tend to look for trouble to engage your mind. It also shows me that you'll be, in the coming months, uh, be connecting with your intuitive nature uh, and starting to listen to that a lot more. And I'm seeing that there's going to be a lot of energy that opens up to you with that. I see a very deep love of nature and um, grounding. I, I feel a lot of water and stones and river stones around you. So I feel that um, you need to get out into nature more. Your boredom comes from not allowing yourself some release, uh, which means that you're either not doing your your meditations or you're not um, connecting to what brings you peace. Once you start to do that again, all your answers will come to you very, very clearly. Are you, uh, and I apologize because it's on the radio, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but are you in the process of um, a, a separation or moving, like an end of a relationship? Uh, oh, actually, that ended a long time ago. <laughs> okay. So because the reason why I ask that is because I see that the boredom has a lot to do with stagnation of a relationship. So I don't know if the, when the relationship ended, we just stopped there but that's going to change as well i do feel that there's a new relationship coming so if you're not in one that's you know the, you said it ended a long time ago so that's good i don't have to tell you oh hey you're with the wrong person <laughs> <laughs> which is what which is what it was going to amount to <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> I love trying to it. do that. I love it. Um, so I also see a lot of fulfillment and a lot of changes that are coming. Are you an artist? No. Okay. Um, so I, who's I'm the artist really, around I'm really, you? I'm really, I'm really good at drawing stick figures. <laughs> okay. Who's the artist that lives with you that's always doodling and drawing on everything? Um, well, I don't know if he's always drawing on stuff, but my, my son. Okay, so I definitely see an artist around you and the creativity starting to flow, and I feel that, is he into anime? He is. Okay, because I see anime all around him. He has a very, very strong spirit that's watching over him, and I feel that male spirit is really helping him get a lot out in his drawings. But I do see it as anime. I see it's very, very connected to the Asian culture. It's not just the 
the, you know, um, the end thing. Like, I feel he really feels like he's connected to that, that Asian culture. Uh, I, I feel there's going to be a lot of success. The more he connects with that and learns about it, the more success he'll have. Well, that's what we're looking to do is get him into um, City College here so he can um, take uh, video game design because that's what he wants to do. That's awesome. He'll do very, very well. You can hear my dog over there. Can't you? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I just, I can't have a normal animal. Um, <laughs> so there's definitely, and the male spirit, it's a male spirit that's around your son. He also um, comes through for you very, very strong. And he says, you know, you're almost to the end game because you keep, your boredom is because you feel like you need to put yourself on the back burner and everything until your son's in a, in a place where he's feeling successful and moving in the right direction. And I think that's coming very soon. Is he looking to start um, that college in the summer, like at the slower time of college or in the fall? Uh, probably the fall. I still have to, you know, we still have to go and do the whole works. And I already spoke to somebody there and they said, just wait until he graduates, you know, high school. Uh -huh. Now there's no need to rush. Um, because I was kind of about ready to lose my mind when I was, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what do, what do I do? Where do I go? And he was just like, just breathe, you know, let him get through high school, let him graduate, which he graduates in May, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and and she was just like, and then come in and see us, you know. So okay. That's what okay. I heard I do. Well, that's perfect. I think that, you know, and he needs to stick with his artistic ability. I really feel that's his future and it's never going to be work for him. It'll always, I mean, of course, every time we all have, no matter what we do, even if we love what we're doing, we're going to have our bad days. But I, I really feel that, um, it's an, it's a natural, he's very, very drawn to what he wants to go into. I think he'll be a natural at it. Is there, it, he needs to go in with the, the understanding that there's enough for everybody, but that he does really bring a unique, he needs to tap into that ancient wisdom. I do feel that he has Asian culture in his past lives. I wondered about that because he's always, always, I mean, even when he was, get what cartoon would come on and it was you, 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 Japanese or something and picked mm -hmm. up on it right away. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. I I definitely see Asian culture all around him. So this gentleman that's watching over him, is that your father? Is your father passed? My, father, my father's passed, but I've got a lot of relatives that have passed. So okay. I, Who is George? You know, that's funny. I have a cousin whose name is George, but he's still here. My... My uncle, who's still here, whose name is George. Okay. So the man, he keeps talking about George. He keeps talking about George. So is George's, you said your cousin, his name George, is the, was there your uncle named George, but he's still living as well? Right. Okay. And so this man might be related to them because he keeps telling me the name George. Well, well. He was, okay, so if it's my father, no, my father spent more time with my cousins. Okay. So that would make sense that he would probably bring up the oldest. Okay. Um, of, of, the, of the cousins, whose name is George. So that's possible. Okay. So, and your father, what did he do for a living? Was he a mechanic? Um, no, he was not. No, he actually, um, he drove big rigs for a very long time until he had to stop doing that. Okay. Um, All right. This, then, this gentleman gives me the, like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I thought he was like a mechanic. He had like a mechanic shirt on with the badge, you know, that has the name and then the logo, um, you know, navy blue, you know, like a uniform you would see at a gas station or mechanics, but. Uh, is that your dad? Did he wear one like that? No. no. Okay. He did not. All right. Well, he's showing me that, so I'm not sure who he is, but he does show me the the name George. 
Um, and he does show me he, you know, he, I really feel he's a very, very loving, protective spirit over your son. And excuse the language, but he tells me that I'm supposed to tell you, quit worrying about it. You didn't F him up. <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe you did. Oh my God. Because that's what he told me that he told me that you need to know that. So. Oh my um, God. Wow. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have said that. Well. I felt like I fucked up on things, you know? Oh my God. Yeah, no, not so much. So. <laughs> wow, that just, that just totally floored me. So um, he loves both of you, but I really feel your your son's going to do very well. I think he needs to keep doodling and stick with what he's doing. Good. That's good to know. But I do worry about him. Yeah. <sighs> and you have a relationship coming up, so that's good. We didn't have to tell you, hey, you're not with the right guy. <laughs> well, how, how, far down, how, far, hey, how far down the road with this? Right after your son starts college, because this gentleman shows me, and then when me pe pulling the boredom card, um, you know, the four of vessels always shows me that you always have other things that you have to take care of first. So you won't probably venture forward on that until you feel like your son is settled. So I'm looking at that to being around summer's end or the beginning of fall. Okay. I actually got something to look forward to. <laughs> yes, you do. I hope this person's real nice and not an ass. <laughs> well, don't be picky. Oh, I have. Oh, yeah. Right? So uh, yep. don't go yeah, out with right. an ass. It's that easy after the three date rule. That's what I always say. Three date rule. By the third date, you know if they're a good actor or not. Yeah. Well, no, I think you can <clears throat> sometimes know on the first date. Gosh. Yeah. I went out on a date with someone years ago, and on the very first, no, by the by the second date, he was telling me he loved me and all that stuff. And I looked at him, I said, dude, back away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. you know. Don't waste any time then. But, yeah, it looks like in the fall, so that's good. Okay, cool. Well, Kathleen, I want to thank you because I know that you're not feeling up to par, so that was that was definitely a pleasant surprise. Well, thank you for allowing me to give you a reading. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Thanks, honey. I'll keep you updated. Uh, All right. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Take Chris. Care. Bet, no problem. Okay, Adriana, do you want to hit one on your phone? Say hey, hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. I, I actually don't want a reading. Hi, Kathleen. I just wanted to um, see uh, my mom is on the... I don't know if you see her, Chris. It's a nine one four number, so I'll just probably um, maybe Mar Marion Marion or something Marianella. Yeah, or... Marianella. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I see her there. Uh, so so we're gonna go. Um, I think actually she's gonna be next. So there you go. Okay, so I'll skip mine and just give it to her. <laughs> Okay, very good. I'm just good. listening. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so we're going to come over here and brand new caller. Where are you now? There she is. Marianella. Yes. Hello, welcome, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. calling. Thank you. <laughs> you have a very soft, gentle voice. Everybody's sleeping in the house. <laughs> She's oh. trying to be quiet. So you got, you have okay. the little one to sleep, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have a question or would you like me to pull a card for you? Oh, a card is fine. Okay. Grab. My dog's going to start acting all weird again. Okay, so for you, I pulled from the Rider Waite deck, and I pulled the King of Cups. And the King of Cups uh, usually um, shows balance. It also um, shows 
somebody that's coming into your life that's skilled in the law or some kind of trade, um, usually has some kind of connection to religion, um, but is very kind and considerate and, you know, a very um, connected person to their spiritual sense of self. Um, they can also by nature usually come in as healers. They're usually medical or mm -hmm. social worker, um, counselor, that kind of thing. So I'm seeing that there's a gentleman that's coming in and I feel that the gentleman that's coming in is kind, but works in the industry where he would help other people like you. <laughs> Are you currently in a relationship? Yeah. Okay. So does that describe the gentleman that you're in the relationship with? No. Okay. So um it shows me that, you know, that I, I feel that there's a romantic interest coming in. Uh that the cups always usually signify that your cups are over full. Um they're usually a nurturer, they're a good father, they're very, you know, they're they're good about being positive, positive influencers, they'll give you um, connection and a feeling of safety. I, I, I would use the term as love is so transforming. I'm not saying that the relationship you're currently in cannot evolve into that, but I do see the King of Cups always shows me that a romantic interest is coming in and it's somebody that's a nurturer or connected or loving, you know, or something like that. So it might be even somebody that's in the medical field or, um, now, the King of Cups can also be a man that is very law-abiding, very religious, um, somebody that has a very strong sense of right and wrong and continues mm -hmm. it. So lawyers and stuff fall into that as well, mm -hmm. which they don't come across as nurturers to a lot of people, but they are because they do have a very strong sense of right and wrong. Um, so, you know, very business-like as well with a, with a softer side, but I feel this is more of a nurturer that's coming in and it does look like somebody that's coming in your future. So, okay. um, that's what the card said. It also signifies that your health is going to get a lot better. And, um, metaphysically, it also shows if anybody gets in your way this year, look out because you're just going to push them out of your way. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> It, it always shows me that you really have some strong, strong sense of duty. Um, okay. and you know, I, I really, I, I know you already have that strong sense of duty with who you're raising. So yeah, yeah. you're doing a wonderful job at that, by the way. So congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Um, are you moving soon too? No, I, oh my God, I get chills. I want to. <laughs> okay. Cause I do see, um, I do see a move coming up. Okay. So I do feel that there's going to be a move. Mm -hmm. So. The city or? Um. Okay, where? Obviously. I don't know. I do feel it's where you're thinking of moving to. I think everything oh, falls okay. into alignment. So I, I think know. that okay. it will, it will bring you home, closer to what you consider home is, are okay. you wanting to get closer into Manhattan? Is that it? No, actually I want to be closer to the job. Okay. Okay. <laughs> work long hours. Okay. So that's probably where we're looking. We're looking to see that move take place. Okay. Um, because I definitely see the move. I think the move is, is going to be a big catalyst. And, and it's good, obviously. It's a really good move. Yes. Okay, that's I finally see your shoulders going from being very tense to being yeah. very relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the house is beautiful. Thank you, because I feel like so out of shape. I feel like terrible because I, I work like 12 hour days, 15 hour days. <laughs> right. So I think the move will help a lot with that. I also mm -hmm. feel that work will calm down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I see it in a good way. Like I don't, I, I think that it all falls into place very quickly. So it's a good, good year for you. Look for things not to really start to change very much until about August though. Like it looks right around the first week in August, you really have opportunity. Things start to really um, fall into place and move along very, very quickly. Don't stall them because you're like, Oh, it's too quick. 
Mm -hmm. I don't okay. have time to do this. Just go with the flow. Okay. 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 Awesome. Wonderful. It was good to talk to you. Uh, good to talk to you too. Thank you. Do you have any questions about that? Anything I saw? Um, um, the, the job now, it's just going to get better, obviously, right? I, I got the promotion that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. so that, that one, okay. <laughs> yeah, I um, think the job's going to get better. And I think that okay. you are, are really going to find some balance with it. The move okay. is essential in your health and well being, though. I feel that you've gotten everything you can out of your current living conditions. So yeah. I think the move will mm -hmm. be, that'll be the catalyst of everything falling into place after that. So, okay. um, and then work calms down a little bit. I don't want to say it's die down because it doesn't die down. It just calms down. You find your groove. Mm -hmm. Um, also, that's the way I'll put it. You find your groove, and I feel that you continue continue to get quite a bit out of it all. So, mm -hmm. the move is definitely essential. But I I think the move, or you'll know where you're moving by the first week in August. Oh, okay. Wow. So. You. <laughs> yeah. And, and the current relationship. Um. I feel like it's going nowhere. It could go either way. I feel that the, the, the King of Cups shows me that a new romantic interest is coming in. So I feel you'll have to choose between two. Okay. And I feel the romantic interest that's coming in is a nurturer and loving and caring and wants to heal. And I think love can be very transforming. Not that the person you're with isn't like that now, but that's, mm -hmm. I see the King of Cups is coming in when I pick that card that always signifies new romance, connection, and okay. um, growth in relationships. Oh, okay. So, oh, but awesome. any relationship can evolve to survive. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> For Thank sure. Thank you so much, Kathy. You're very welcome. It was good to talk to you again. Keep me updated on how things are going. Yes, I will. I will. But so far, you've been, like, right on the money. <laughs> well, thank you. That makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> yes, everything you've said is just, like, everything's been happening, like, as you said it, within the same time frame. It was crazy. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. And things thank are going you. very, very well. I think that... They'll continue to do so. For, so look for the first week in August to mm -hmm. be an energy shift and why you get really busy. Yeah, yeah. And my mom's health is, I, I, I know she's deteriorating really bad. Um, She's actually coming to New York. So it's really um great news. I'm bringing her home in uh, Monday. Oh, okay. So I'm really happy about that. So. Yeah, I think it'll be important for you two to be close to each other right now for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. That's good news, <laughs> too. All right, have okay. a wonderful night. Thanks for calling. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah, you thank too. you very much. Thank all you right, all. You can press one on your phone if you want to just keep listening. Um, okay. Now, there's a couple of uh, mystery anonymous people. I don't know who you are. I tried already unmuting one of you, and now I don't know which one is which. So, if there's anybody that's on uh, on um, an unidentified caller or is called in with Skype uh, and you want to talk to us, then unmute. Um, if you're on a phone, you can unmute by pressing one. I don't know who – there's two anon – well, there's one anonymous now again. There were two. Uh, so I, one, I, I don't one know. One is Corrine. Oh, okay. Well, the other one must have hung up then because Corrine just got here. Well, I don't mean just, but she the the other anonymous caller was was there before Corrine was. Hello, who's squeaking? That might have been my that might have been my bird. Do you hear the bird? Cause the... Well, I think that's it then. I guess I think that's it. If anyone else, unmute yourself if if I missed anyone. Otherwise, I guess that's it. I guess I don't hear anybody unmuting. So tell people how they can get a hold of you. Uh, you can get a hold of me by calling the office at 
8202, or you can uh, check me out on Facebook at Kathleen Moore Psychic, uh, and you can also get in touch with me through email at Kathleen Moore Reading at gmail.com. So. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks to Billy and Kathleen. It's uh, good to yak with you. I'm glad you're feeling at least a little bit better. A little bit better, yes. I don't look better, yeah. but I'm feeling better. <laughs> little. <laughs> so and I have. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought maybe I could do it. And then I looked and I was like, not so much. There's no reason to put that on everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess we could be done then. Um, so, uh, let's see, tomorrow we are off, and Friday we solve us. So, um, so that's what's what's coming up for you guys. It's time for the bird to get a treat for being quiet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just called the dog over. That's how he calls the dog over. It sounds like he's okay, saying guys. pretty bird to me. All right. So, you guys thank you, everyone. Peace out. Take care. Good night. Right. Night.